Joining me now to discuss this and other political matters of this week is Labor MP Graham Perrett from Brisbane and Liberal MP Paul Fletcher from Sydney. Thanks so much for joining me on this Easter long weekend, gentlemen. Good afternoon, Laura. Happy Easter now, to you Graham both. Perrett, first to you. We've seen the comments from Simon Crean this morning. He's only recently out of the ministry. In what context do you see these comments this morning? Is this just a, a little bit of a hangover from uh, the leadership uh, chaos of a few weeks ago? Oh, no, I think if you look at uh, Simon Crean's uh, superannuation pedigree, you'll see both from his time in the ACTU and, and his time in the Hawke and Keating governments, he has been, he fully understands how hard it was to get uh, Labor's superannuation uh, laws up, and uh, so now that people accept superannuation, despite the opposition back then, and despite the opposition in the last few few years, even by people like Paul, uh, against our increases from uh, super from nine percent to twelve percent. So he understands the superannuation industry, uh, and obviously, like all of us, he wants to make sure that our superannuation industry continues to to grow and grow and grow. We've got over a trillion dollars under managed funds at the moment and uh, he would like to see that uh, continue to be strong. I see it, his comments in that context entirely. Are you worried about the politics in this superannuation debate at the moment and where do you stand on it? Are you uh, really heeding the, the warnings from Simon Crean or do you think there is a legitimate argument in scaling back some of those tax concessions for the wealthy? Well, uh, I, I say this as a, as a lawyer, I'm never a fan of retrospective legislation. So that's my general principle to all laws. Um, so I, I share, would share Simon Crean's concerns about that. Uh, however, I, I, I also know that there can be there can be, uh, in the interest of tax minimisation, uh, sometimes capital can flow to areas that, that governments hadn't anticipated. Now, obviously, we, we, we would never tinker with the, the... Well, I hope we would never, ever tinker with that general Australian... Uh, the, the general Australian and general businesses' superannuation savings. But if people are minimising, you know, effectively tax dodging, uh, rather than just preparing for their future, if they're... Rather than preparing for the future if they're tax dodging now, that's something that every good government would, would have a look at. Uh, but I, I think we're talking about a very, very, very small percentage of Australians that are doing that. Most pay-as-you-earn uh, Australians or most business people are just putting super away and it's quietly accumulating and that would never be tinkered with by Labor. We're the party that created super, universal super in Australia and we're, we're the party that will protect it forever. Paul, now, however, has Minister a plan to tax young supers, the super of um, 3.6 million Australians. Well, we'll get to Paul Fletcher's comments in a moment, but first, Tra Trade Minister Craig Emerson was on Sky News yesterday. He entered the superannuation debate as well. This is what he had to say. There is a legitimate debate about the very top end. That's the fact. There is a legitimate debate. And if we do want to uh, uh, identify sources on an ongoing basis for uh, such programs as the National School Improvement Program, which I think is not a luxury but essential for this country, that debate should be had. Of course, there will be some people in the superannuation industry who I understand have an interest in saying do not touch any aspect of superannuation, even for the fabulously wealthy. And what is fabulously wealthy there, Graham Perrett, that Craig Emerson is referring to? We know there's been uh, talk about uh, moving the threshold from 300000 those who earn $300,000 a year, to $180,000 a year. How do we define the fabulously wealthy, if you like? Well, obviously we need to look at some actuarial figures and, and, and where um, funds are being moved to minimise tax uh, rather than reward saving to, to minimise legitimate, uh, you know, legitimate, what should be legitimate earnings. So I'll, I'll leave that to the, uh, you know, Dr Emerson, he's one, the one with the, the PhD in but economics. But Graham Perrett, so do you might... understand some of the arguments of business here that's saying by changing superannuation that you are uh, really damaging the confidence of people putting their money into to such areas? Well, let's, let's have a look at the reality of what we've actually done. We've increased the contribution from 9% to 12%. We've given a long lead in so that business has a time to adjust and working Australians have time to adjust. Uh, we, we do... Uh, now, the opposition voted against that, voted against that, and uh, uh, we, we've 
cut the savings from, we've cut the uh, the taxes for 3.6 million Australians. The opposition said they'll reintroduce those taxes. So that's what we've done about super. Now there's fear and misinformation out there at the moment, and people wanting to rule stuff in, rule stuff out. That's ne that's always a dance before budget, but it's never actually a dance that any good government uh, particularly uh, listens to. We're, I'm sure, I'm sure that the the percentage of people that we're talking about who are, are bending the rules to minimise their tax payments rather than just uh, concentrate on uh, having a comfortable existence, a comfortable retirement existence, are uh, the ones we, m we might have a closer look at and happy to have a, a debate about that, happy to, happy to make sure that the community is educated. But I'm not going to listen to a fear campaign uh, drummed up by those that uh, are trying to hide what they're going to do uh, come election day, which is to hit the 3.6 million lower paid Australians. All right, Paul Fletcher, we have seen this speculation. It's earlier than usual, perhaps. This is budget speculation season, but there's this talk about the fabulously wealthy and scaling back of some of these tax concessions. Can you see any argument here where it is right or, or proper or at least legitimate to scale back some of those, those areas and those concessions given to those uh, people on a high wage? Well, Laura, the talk about fabulously wealthy and the talk from Graham this afternoon about tax uh, evasion and so on is merely a distraction. The facts are that the rules for superannuation have been in place for some 20 years. Millions of Australians have built up superannuation balances in reliance on the rules as they have always stood. It has always been the case that there's been a 15% tax on contributions. That first change when the present Labor government put an extra tax on people earning more than $300,000 and there's now talk of that coming down. There's also ta talk of extra tax being levied on the earnings within your superannuation fund and there is also speculation about extra tax being levied when you withdraw money from superannuation to fund your retirement. So understandably millions of Australians should be very concerned because they have been putting their money into the superannuation system for many years in reliance on the rules as set by the then government. And one of the reasons Simon Crean, I think, has said what he has is because it was a Labor government which set those rules. So it's a very dubious way to treat the Australian people to try and change the rules after they've put money into the superannuation environment in relation on the uh, in reliance on the but present. But Paul Fletcher, rules. having a look at some of these figures, some suggest that those high wage earners are almost ten thousand dollars better off when it comes to super every year compared to, uh, I guess, lower income earners that only put about nine hundred dollars into super. There's a fair disparity there. Should that be? allowed with uh, such well, concessions Laura, for think, those, those wealthy? I think there's a couple of important points. Um, the first important point is that when people have been putting their money into the system for years and years in reliance on the current rules, it is extremely troubling that the present government would now turn around and say, well, you've had your money locked up in the superannuation system. Bear in mind, once you put it in there, you can't take it out until you get to retirement age, except in very special circumstances. So money's been locked up in there on the basis of a particular set of rules and what is now uh, speculated about, very uh, strongly based rumours, is that the present government is looking at introducing additional taxes on the balances that people have built up. Well, let's just wait and see. Uh, this is a government which has a desperate budgetary shortfall. And so what they're doing is they're casting around for anywhere they can find to rake in some extra tax revenue following over five years of lack of budget discipline and the spending being, being in excess of revenue each year. And what it now well, looks very likely that they're proposing to do is to tax the savings of Australians which have been built up in reliance on the present rules. And that is why substantial respected Labor figures like Simon Crean are saying we should not be doing this. Let's just bear in mind that the consistent message from both parties, in fact, for a long time to middle Australia has been you need to take responsibility for providing for your own retirement 
by building up superannuation balances, to now turn around and engage in class warfare rhetoric on the basis, according to some suggestions, that balances of seven or $800,000 are going to qualify for some kind of additional tax. These well, are your Australians. party, Paul Fletcher, your party, Paul Fletcher, clearly doesn't support any changes in this area, any adverse changes, as Tony Abbott puts it. Well, why won't uh, Tony Abbott uh, commit to repealing the changes if uh, you win at the next election? Laura, the reality is that we cannot overnight fix up all of the extraordinary list of mistakes this government has made in over five years. And we have a tough job ahead of us to get the, bad, the budget back under control, to reintroduce fiscal discipline. Now, time after time, we've seen a pattern of this government introducing uh, extra taxes, immediately rushing out to spend the money. Uh, troublingly, quite often, the taxes uh, don't actually cover the extra spending. And of course, we've seen, seen that with the uh, minerals resource rent tax. And so we have a tough job ahead of us. It would simply be irresponsible for us to say, oh, don't worry, we can come in and overnight click our fingers and fix up all of the mistakes this government has made over the last five mm. years. All right, well, there's plenty of uh, weeks to go, six weeks before Budget Day, so the, the speculation will continue. We're going to take a quick break and come, with back, uh, come back with some more politics of the week. Stay with us. We asked a panel of local experts to tell us what makes Yakult the world's leading probiotic. Lactobacillus, 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 Hard to say, great to drink. Yakult is the only probiotic that contains the live beneficial bacteria Lactobacillus casei Sharota strain. So if you're looking for a quality probiotic, there's really only one choice, Yakult. Everybody, every day. First home or investment property, a Macquarie mortgage lets you make one of the biggest investment decisions of your life work for you. Talk to your mortgage broker or financial advisor today or call Macquarie. Say no to hair loss with men's regain foam. In a clinical trial, 9 out of 10 men kept or regrew their hair. So don't be held back. Stop losing, start gaining. Hi, I'm the new girl at Coles. at Coles, and here's what's new at Coles. It's a dip. It's a spread. It's, it's only 78 food. calories. At it's Coles. chock filling. Did I mention at it's Coles. new? At Coles? At Sage, we have over 6 million customers, and that makes us a leading global supplier of business management solutions for companies with up to 1,000 employees. Like Sage CRM, our web-based business process and sales management solution, tightly integrated with our ERP products and deployable on-premise or in the cloud. With credentials like these, we must be doing something right. So call us on 13 Sage. A car that thinks like no other car. Feels like no other car drives like no other car. Receives reviews like no other car. Yours with three years or 60,000 kilometres free scheduled servicing. The all new Volvo V40. It's you. What's the most complete all-in-one parasite protection? Advocate. It kills fleas even before they bite. It protects pets against worms and it's water resistant. Advocate, now that's advanced pet care. Hi there, Kitty from Progressive Car Insurance. Here to let you know that we're 100% online, which means less overheads for us and more savings for you. Ready to save? Visit progressiveonline.com.au. Welcome back to Lunchtime Agenda. Well, gay marriage is never too far from the political debate. And over the weekend, Tony Abbott's daughters, Frances and Bridget, said that they strongly support gay marriage. But Tony Abbott hasn't changed his mind. As you can see, they don't mind disagreeing with their dad. Uh, 
their mother's done a good job in bringing them up to be forthright young women. It is party policy, uh, coalition party policy, that marriage is between a man and a woman. As long as it's party policy, and that's a matter for the party room, there's no conscience vote. Paul Fletcher, where do you stand on this issue and when can you see that the party's stance would change on this? Well, we took a policy to the last election that marriage is between a man and a woman. Um, that is the policy of the Liberal and National Coalition. Um, I've received a lot of feedback, as have all members of parliament. I've consulted very widely with my electorate of Bradfield and I would have to say the a strong majority view that I've received in my electorate of Bradfield is to maintain the current position that the law of Australia says that marriage is between a man and a woman. And Grandparent, you have two gay brothers, so obviously your personal stance on this is uh, perhaps a little different. Now, do you think there's been a considerable uh, pro shift within the Labor Party or is there still a, f a fair way to go? Well, look, um, I think the other day we saw the American TV entertainer Ellen DeGeneres come to Australia with her Australian wife Portia De Rossi and the world didn't come to an end. I mean, most people under 25 just saw the fact that she was here with her wife as you know, not, not really worthy of comment. There were, I didn't see people uh, protesting against the, the show coming here or, or treating Alan in, in a way that was anything out of the ordinary. Um, it's funny how things have moved on so quickly. I, I think when she came out uh, of the closet, so to speak, uh, a few years ago, it, it impacted on Alan's career. Now she's quite loved throughout the world. So I think society has moved on. Um, uh, Paul and I are probably of a similar age that grew up in a, in a more uh, homophobic time, uh, homophobic time, and um, nowadays the younger generation it's not an issue at all. Um, I, w I would have thought it's a sort of issue that Tony Abbott with that um, free thinking family of his might allow his party, the fabulous Liberal Party, that never has, uh, that you know, always supports a conscience vote, to have a, a conscience vote on something like this if um, Adam Bent's legislation does come before the Parliament. Uh, but obviously he's saying it's set in stone forever. Because it's the policy now, it must be the policy forever, which is a, a bizarre approach. Even though he's got these um, sort of, you know, trotting out his daughter's views to sort of to counterbalance his hard Core, uh, hard core views about uh, marriage equality. Now, I do want to ask you about another issue in Queensland today, and that is environmental approvals uh, for two of the state's major coal seam gas uh, projects. This happened in 2010. These projects worth around $40 million. Now, it appears that a whistleblower says that these were rushed, uh, pointing to major flaws in the environmental process. This happened under the watch of the Bly Labor government. Do Tony Burke's new legislative changes when it comes to coal seam gas, does that mean that this uh, kind of thing will never happen again? Well, the, the changes uh, that we recently introduced, and I think um, the Coalition supported us on that, um, oh, I'm not 100 per cent sure on that, we're, we're, we're all about uh, water being a trigger rather than an endangered species. So we'd need to look at these projects uh, from memory, uh, if they're connecting, connected with the uh, Artesian Basin, uh, then they would potentially have a significant impact on water, so therefore that water trigger would uh, come into play and the expert panel would have to make a decision as to whether uh, you know, the fracking or the, the coal seam gas exploration or mining uh, w would have an impact on the water table. So um, okay. perhaps future, uh, future projects would be caught by this, this new legislation, this, okay. this uh, addition to the EPBC. L Laura, Paul Fletcher, yeah, yes, I was sorry. just going to say, the, the, the case in Queensland, uh, as I understand it, concerns an approval process under Queensland legislation. Mm. And what's been um, stated by at least one person involved in that was that she had concerns about that process. The important thing is these are matters dealt with by state law. For example... But isn't Campbell Newman pushing for uh, scaling back of even more green tape? Well, uh, the point I was going to make was that in New South Wales we've just seen some additional measures introduced, for example, exclusion zones around homes and so on. Mm -hmm. So um, there are really two issues here. The first is 
the merits of the laws, the details of them. The second is whether there is a particular need for the Commonwealth to come in over the top when there is existing state legislation. And the particular choice by Minister Burke to come in over the top with some legislation here uh, appears to... Um, uh, the question arises, um, is there um, adequate state legislation in place and okay. do, you, do you get a benefit which outweighs the cost of the complexity and burden of having duplicative state and federal legislation? All right, Paul Fletcher, I just want to finally ask you about the industrial relations policy of the coalition. Tony Abbott has flagged that this will be released in a number of weeks. Now, there's been encouragement from within your party uh, to really uh, put forward uh, individual contracts and perhaps crack, down, perhaps crack down on union power. Is this something that you hope to see unveiled by the coalition in the next few weeks? Well, look, what I hope to see in the area of industrial relations, as in a range of other areas, is that we put out comprehensive policies which explain to the Australian people what our plans are. Now we've uh, announced comprehensive policies across a range of areas. We have a very thorough uh, program of policy development underway led by Andrew Robb as the chairman of the Coalition's Policy Committee. So we will have policies in a whole range of areas um, uh, out uh, in advance of the next election. Um, and uh, I'm confident that will give the Australian people a good opportunity to... Do you agree that there should be more encouragement towards individual agreements and a crackdown on union power, though? Uh, look, let's wait and see the detail of the policy, um, but I'm confident that we will have a policy in industrial relations, as in other areas, so that people know exactly what choice they're making between a government that is going to uh, encourage economic activity, get the budget back in balance, get cost of living under control, as compared to a party which is so focused on its internal affairs that it has largely lost interest in and capability to deal with the matters that are of day-to-day -day concerns of the Australian people. And that's the problem the All Labor right. Party's got itself into. Paul Fletcher and Graham Perrett, thanks so much for joining us on Lunchtime Agenda. We'll speak to you soon, no doubt. And David Spears will be along with PM Agenda this afternoon. Happy Easter.